on TV. Have you been watching the election campaign? Come on. Your salvation is not in Washington. Your salvation is not from Trenton. Your salvation is upon him. Amen. Let that Holy Spirit, who ministered to us so powerfully two weeks ago, and I'm sure again last week, I'm sorry I wasn't here, but I'm sure again last week, let him work in your life. Let him have his way. And if you needed to make a change to get that that going in your life, so tune in. Take this opportunity now. Everyone, rise to your feet because we're going to usher in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're going to enjoy the presence of His Holy Spirit because He is here. So I'm going to turn it over now to Pastor Mafica and the worship team, and they're going to help bring you into His presence. Feel free to yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Be free today. We've got a couple of things going on here. One, the altar's open. If you want to draw closer in a symbolic way by stepping forward and coming up, yes, you are welcome. Feel free. Let me know. I'll get him out of the way. Okay. Flag flagging's nice, but it's not why we're here. A word, a touch, something. If you think you've got a prophetic word, let us know. We are open to the spirit of prophecy today. So get ready. You're going to want to yes. stay alert. Yes. You're going to want to hear what's happening. You're going to want to see what's happening. Because God is in the house today. Are we ready to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Ray. Hallelujah. Before we start, let me give a word about this praise. Uh, something in God encounter. I'm working nights now. I'm not really. I'm out of my comfort zone. Working nights after all my life, you know, paying my dues. I'm covering. And uh, recently, we've had to put an audio system in the plant so they can hear music. People want music, so we put different ones. There's, there's three different systems in the plant, and they get to play all kinds of music I don't like and music that's just hard to hear and hard to listen to. So one day, last week, I was brave enough to go over to the amp and put on hillside worship. I knew that someone would hear one song and just put it back to their bachata or whatever it is they're listening to. Uh, so I, I just I said I'll get at least one or two songs out of it. And I'm working on the machine and I turned it up as you know so it's not annoying. And the craziest thing happened. Everybody started chanting. The whole floor was chanting this song uh, in his name. And I was sitting there and I'm going, you know, you, do, you get that, that feeling like, whoa, what just happened? And the whole place was chanting the song and no one turned it off and it played until 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know about you, but for some reason I felt honored to be at night, to be the one to do that. And I've had other testimonies about having a praise. I was once listening to some regular music, put it on the praise, and fell, horrible fall, and did not get hurt. I've had that happen before. And I should have got hurt. I landed right on my elbow. I'm 250 pounds. Nothing. Nothing. And I can only attribute that, the, the logic behind that, it, that I figured out is when we're listening to praise, heavenly bodies come down. The Lord comes down. He's listening to you. He's going, what's that sweet sound? What, what is that? And he goes to investigate. And he shows up. And I can't imagine God being in the place where I am and he's going to let me fall and get hurt. You know, you, you get that? I mean, God, my day is ended, and and so he, some, you know, he let the angels will not let you dash a foot again at a stone, right? So the word starts to come alive, and I just want to tell you, there is power in praise. Yes, there is power in praise. A lot of power in praise. Since that day that I put the music on in the plant, a hundred people around, any one of them could have gone up to change it, 
and they do they typically do they have a little little fights about what music they want to listen to so I knew I didn't stand a chance listening to Hillsong at least I thought I did but I was brave enough I was crazy enough I was bold enough to go in there and put it and turn my back and nobody touched it at the contrary they were singing along now I hear it in different parts there are three different systems now every now and then I'll hear Christian music in another part of the plant that I did not put on so it has a way of growing on people for some reason somebody says hey wait a minute they're Christian these are Christians these are not non-Christians these are Christians and they're they're they've just been given the freedom to put on Christian music whenever they want and I have a funny feeling that whenever they do no one's ever gonna be able to touch it to, to change it so to God be the glory yes yes I just want to glorify God yes because we live in a world where it doesn't seem that God is doing anything that his presence seems to be absent people are claiming to be Christians and everyone's going what are you talking what's what's being a Christian but that you go into my wallet and get money you know what that people are losing faith that there's a God attached to Christianity it's just a country club <laughs> it's just a country club it's a place where we go and do a lot of other things but God's not over there people are starting to see that show up when you bring him it's a dark dark world and when you go over there with your tiny little light my God that's right be careful be faithful and never ever stop praising him never stop praising him because he shows up yes Lord he show he hears you he yes, hears that Lord. he shows up oh, come on let's praise the Lord We're going to give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. This kingdom of his love, it endures forever. Lord, we praise you right now. As our praises go up, Lord, we thank you for blessings coming down, releasing your glory. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, whose love endures forever. He is good, he's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Oh, oh, oh. 
wherever we go. You're so faithful. Hallelujah. We give thanks to the Lord. He's our God and our King. Yes, for He is good. He is above all things. Sing praise. Sing praise. praise you. We will magnify you, Lord God. Forever and a day, you will love us. Hallelujah. Lord is so grateful to be in your presence, in your midst. Better is one day in your house than anywhere else, oh God. If this was our last day, oh God, better is one day in your house not just that we are gathered in this physical building but we know that we are surrounded always by your love and your presence oh God we are in your house we are the house of God how great it is that you are in us how great is the power of your love for us hallelujah Lord thank you Lord Yes, oh God. There is none like you, oh God. There is power in his love. Lord, I come to you. Thank you. 
to your Lord. That unconditional love is so powerful. May everything we do be in love. Lord, I come to know.
To just share a quick uh, re just revelation for us to grasp to God. We were filled with His Spirit, Lord, in which the power of God's love is powerful to change. And his amazing love, our King, should die for us. We are made in Christ's image, and I believe that the Spirit is just leading me to just remind us to grasp this revelation that we are made in Christ's image. The power of his love abides within us. As we love, as we are releasing the glory of God, his power is going forth. Anointing goes forth when we walk in the love of God, the agape love of God. In a, in a, in a place to be leading us in that agape love. So we can release his power. It says, you are my king. How is it that you should die for me? Every day, we can find that the Lord is putting us in a place to die for others. We're dying to ourselves. We are being equipped in the house of God as apostles, as an apostolic leader to go forth like Christ in us to die for others. To die to ourselves to die to being right, to die to having a way so the power of the love of God may flow and touch up. I wanted to share that I believe the Lord is the last of that revelation. Amen. 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 No? All right. 
right. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the church where Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. I'm just going to forge ahead with a couple of quick announcements so we can get that business out of the way. We can get back into worshiping and praising the Lord. While I'm doing the announcements, get your offerings, your tithes and your offerings ready because we'll be taking that up. Dave, if you could bring a basket. Thanks. Um, and then we're going to take communion right after. Um, wanted to let you know, guys, right after service today, we've got our men's meeting. So we're going to um, get together. Andy's made us some lunch again. So you got that to look forward to. Come on right down. In the notes it says, we're going to have an unbelievably, unexpectedly, unusual time to be with men. Amen. Looking for something different? Amen. This is it for men. Unbelievable. We're going to be opening up our study of Daniel. Um, a word about the spirit of prophecy when prophecy comes. Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2.2. He wrote, he said, write the vision down clearly so that when the time is right, those that it's for, they can run with it. Okay? So a little preview. Back in 1990 or so, a dear friend of mine had a prophetic word, and he delivered it because he believed it was the time was right to deliver this word. But it's taken 15 or 16 or 17 years or more for it to germinate and get ready. Well, the day is now. The word was this. It's been a time for Esther's. We have had praying women working so hard in the church for centuries. I'm not even talking decades, centuries. Women have held us together, upheld us, been the backbone of the church, and kept us moving forward. And I thank God for those ladies. Every one of them for the past 2,000 years. But today is a day for Daniels. Up. Know who they are Amen. and take their place because we're moving into perilous times. We're going to be moving, as Christians, we're going to be moving into some really tough times. We've been under attack for a long time. And the enemy's mounting up against us. Like we said when we were in Iraq, a resurgence. Because he's in a time for men to rise up. So, men, if you haven't made plans for today, try and change your plans to get down for the meeting so that we can kick this off. If not, get ready for next month. We'll catch you right up quickly. Um, we've got something special coming in next week. I'm going to let Dallas handle this because uh, she, she knows it as good as I do, and uh, <laughs> she says things better. I am so excited about that word. It is a day for Daniels. That has been a prayer in my heart for a long time because, you know, the enemy comes to steal and destroy, and he's been trying to destroy our families for a long time, and his strategy is, there are many, but part of that strategy was to take men and strip them of their identities and their roles, and women have been put in their place, and you know, women, we can do a really good job. We can, but God, God's purpose and plan was for man to lead the household, man to cover his wife and his family. And so I just love that word because I think it goes right in alignment is I'm going to be talking to you about something dear to my heart, families, families. And when families grow, as the Lord calls out, to go forth and multiply, there are little ones. And I'm just excited to share the little ones. I'm going to call them big. The big stars are coming. Uh, we know that every year we support First Choice through the Star of Bethlehem program. First Choice, uh, I think most here are familiar with us, but a little recap. And we're there for women who are experienced unplanned pregnancies so that they know that the options, there is another choice to be made. And we help to inform them they can make a good decision and bring life. And so the Star of Bethlehem program supports the mommies that have given life to their babies this year. And I want to share with you a, a little bit more. <sighs> because I, I think, you know, in there it talks about, we sang this morning about giving glory to God. And... Um, that's what it's about, you know. I'm privileged to say that God 
has allowed me to work for this ministry, his ministry, and we try to do it in excellence because it's, it's his ministry. Amen. And um, someone said just a moment ago, you know, m m make a plan, write it on the wall, so when it's time, you can run with it. Back in the spring, actually previously, God had given us a word that there would be growth another center and he showed up mightily I shared that with you he showed up and in, in 10 minutes provided more than 360,000 for another center and we know it will be in New Brunswick but you know what ministries that do good works need money <laughs> wait and if you were first time there you would say wow that's really great they averaged more than a thousand dollars a head but you know what our budget is over 1.1 million <laughs> No, 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 that's not how, mu it's how much we need. <laughs> it's how much we need. Yeah, but you know what? I like that because he's believing for it. But you know what? It came in at, and it sounds, I know, I know that it's going to sound like, wow, what's she complaining about? 330000 and a banquet is great. I know my executive director, and when she pronounced that, she was praising God, but part of her was like, God, you better show up, because we have salaries to pay, and, and, and we do really well as a ministry with um, how much is allocated, the funds that actually go to saving babies. But what do you do when you have these out? out? And um, she was before the Lord, and she was asking him, you, you've got to show up in a miraculous way. Really need to do that. And by Thursday, she had the answer. Someone came forth to say, you know what? God has put it in my heart to realign this. And so that the funds were there that needed to be in place so that we could just run the, the basic operating costs, let alone build another one. And only God could do that. And why do I share it for, with you? Because you know what? We can get caught up. We do things well. So we can think that it's about us. But the truth is, we can't do anything without him. Be like, wow, we did a good banquet. But no. God wants us to know that every day we need to rely on him. And when we pray in earnest, which we did, he showed up mightily. And he did it in a way that he would be glorified in that donor's life, in my executive's life, in all of our lives. And now I share it with you, a testimony, so that you also can be encouraged. Because whatever it is in your life that you need to call God for, he can and will show up so that he can be glorified and his will be done on this world. So, the stars are coming. Next week, there'll be more. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Things you need to know. Here they are. On November 20th, we're going to be holding a special ordination service uh, ceremony right here, uh, Sunday. So come prepared. We're going to have a little fellowship afterwards, so come prepared. Be praying. We're going to be honoring and recognizing some of the leaders in our church, so come prepared J just to accept them, bless them, be prayed up, be ready for that. Uh, so you can make your holiday plans well in advance. Uh, we're going to be having a special Christmas candlelight service with carols and refreshments on uh, Thursday, December 22nd. So we're not going to have a service on Christmas Day because it's, even though it's a Sunday, uh, we just want you to relax, have a good time with your family. In this world, Christmas is stressful enough. You don't need to make an extra effort to get over here too. However, be careful partying on New Year's Eve because we expect you here on January 1st, which is also a Sunday for a special New Year's Day at Living Water Church. So. Uh, the leadership's already in plans on um, what we're going to be doing for that special day. And we've got some birthday shout-outs. We've got some fresh ones because November is just the day after tomorrow. Yeah. All right? Woo. So, where's my girl? Yeah, she's not here today. It's Rayma's birthday on uh, the second. Oh, my gosh. 29 years young. Anna's, Anna's birthday on the 4th. Happy birthday to Ann. I don't have Bishop's Pipes. I won't sing to you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> also this week is Donna's birthday. Wish Donna a happy birthday for you. Birthday. So, yeah. 
Also this month, on the November 10th, a big day for birthdays, November 10th, uh, Kathy Mackey's birthday is coming up. <laughs> and it will be Layla's birthday, so we'll get her good next week. And also on the 12th, Sultani's birthday. <laughs> Who else's birthday? Dave, Dave when's your birthday? The ele Dave, on the Dave, fill out a card, will you already? <laughs> Three times? <laughs> Ten times. Who's on Tuesday? Your anniversary's oh. on Tuesday. Yay! Yeah. So what are we up to now? Seven? Seven. Seven. Praise God. Seven, seven glorious years and three kids later. And uh, still going. They, they're so faithful here. So. One other thing, uh, in case you didn't see, we do have fresh daily bread. Fresh uh, bread. Fresh. Fresh, unadulterated. Uh, fre fresh daily bread if you care to take one of these. Uh, don't forget, you can also... To make sure you get this, you can order this. Um, you, you can just, there's a coupon in the back. You can just, uh, what? They got a phone app. You can, you can they, there's so many ways to get it. Uh, but, but it's a good resource to keep you um, built up and refreshed in the Lord during the week. So now Amen. it's time to continue our, our worship um, with our offering and also with communion. So if you have your offering together, um, Simply, God says, give and it shall be given unto you. How easy is that? <laughs> you open up the river. You take that dam off the river that's been holding you back. How long have you gone without enough finances? God says, Jesus said, he came. He said it right in the flesh. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together. Will men pour into your bosom? That means when you go and you buy something, it's packed with everything that's supposed to be in that package. Packed. You know, you buy a box. How, how many times you buy a box of cereal or a box of chips or a bag of chips, and it seems like it's half empty? Well, God promises when he causes men to pour into your bosom, that box is going to be full. That package is going to be full. Everything it says on the outside is supposed to be in there is going to be in there and then some in there and then some so trust in God give into his kingdom and he promises he's going to give back so your tithes that's, a, that's your first hedge of protection against financial trouble he counts it as though you gave everything you own to him and then your offerings that's the extra that's what's going to start bringing in that abundance that you've been looking for, that you've been hoping for. Oh, God, I need a miracle. Oh, and Ann's, thank you, Ann. It was on the bottom of the page here. Before I finish that, one last announcement. Um, in January, we're going to be going to the Alaris Nursing Home for a prayer meeting. And I'm leading it. So if you want to volunteer for that in January, thinking ahead, let Ann know that you're interested in going. You don't have to make a commitment. We don't have a hard date yet but see Ann about going there. We're, we want to bless some of the seniors over at the nursing home. So it's, it's, it's good to go visit the, the shut-ins. Um, you'll be blessed. I've done it. it trust me, you'll, you'll be blessed by going. All right. That, that, that's like stocking up for your old age, going to visit people in the hospital, people in the, in the nursing homes. Why? Because one day, God willing, you're going to be around long enough you, you may need to be in a place like that. When you're in a place like that, the, what did we count a year ago? We, we looked at that one slide you had, 80%? Oh, it's higher than that. At least 80% of people in nursing homes and assisted living facilities receive Zero. no visitors, no family, no friends, no churches come specifically to visit that person. Zero. I was talking with my brother yesterday. He says, the people where my mother is now, she's an assistant living, the people where she is are getting jealous of her because my brother comes times twice. But he shows up all the time. There's always someone there. I show up on occasion. I'm rotten. <laughs> he showed up for Oktoberfest. They offered food. Dallas made me go. But, but it was great. It was grateful. But yeah, our family knows that we need to visit our family in nursing homes. Most places, people just left. All right, we got them taken care of. See you later. Um, 
So think about that. It is. It's stocking up for the future. Gosh, I'm going on and on. Also, we're going to receive communion now. So when you bring your offerings up, we're going to receive communion. Because in this is life eternal. Not just life now, life forevermore. This is a sign of our covenant. And Jesus personally has invited you to come and join in what he has for you. So, Father, I thank you. We bless the givers according to your word. Let all your words regarding giving be true. And let your word regarding this holy communion that we partake together in unity as one family, as Mishpoka, the family of God. And we bless you, Lord, for all the work that Jesus did on the cross and most of all for his resurrection through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is how we live and breathe and have our being today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come. Above all power, above all kings, above all nature, and all creatings, above all wisdom, and all ways of I'd like you to keep me in prayer for tomorrow. I'm getting surgery in my eyeballs. 
one of them anyway. Uh, I'm pretty tired for me to see anything anymore. Uh, diabetes has taken its toll. But keep me in prayer that the doctor would not cut anything he doesn't have to cut, that everything goes well, and that uh, I can get my vision back where it needs to be. Uh, because the more I can see, the more I can fix things in the kingdom of God down here. I'll do it blind if I have to. Don't get me wrong. But I can do more seeing. I got a story, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I've got somebody else with a better story, a testimony. So I'm going to invite Aurora to come up. She's got a quick testimony. So if you give Aurora your undivided attention. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I was, I never prepare because if I prepare to say something, I will not be able to sleep for two nights. <laughs> okay. And if uh, I don't prepare, I don't know when or where to start. So please bear with me, David. Don't don't go because you're gonna, you're probably gonna have to help me with this in case I forget. Um, for the last month in my company, there has been. Uh, a drastic change, uh, laying off people and um, changing schedules um, and stuff like that going on. And um, I, I was okay. I was a little bit concerned, but um, I, I was okay until about uh, two weeks ago. I walked. On a, I, I think it was on a Tuesday. I walked in and um, after, after staying you know, for about an hour and a half in, in my desk working in my computer, one application at a time I started disappearing. I went into finance. Um, sorry, you're not, um, uh, what's the word? You, you're not, yes, you're not. I went into HR. You're not authorized. By then, I was really getting concerned. I said, oh my goodness. <clears throat> and um, just shut off. You are not authorized on this, um, for this machine, uh, computer. So I said, what is going on? And uh, he said, no, I don't know of anything. But the way things are now in the company, who knows? So I called the help desk. And sure enough, they said, um, um, I gave my name and my uh, uh, EID. And they, uh, he, the guy told me, I don't see you here. I'm sorry, I cannot find you. I said, no, 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 no. It's got to be a mistake because I have been in the company for over 22 years. So no, please try to find me. And a few seconds later, he said, no, 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 you're here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Oh, OK, thank you. Out of this organization, just like that. And uh, for a fraction of a second, I saw dark. And I, I thought I was going to right there. And uh, <clears throat> I remember a um, little card that I have on the top of my uh, laptop. And I immediately went on it. My eyes weren't straight. Lord, remind me that nothing is going to happen to me today without you and I handle it together. Just like that. And at that moment, I just, OK, you know, everything is going to be OK. I don't know what it is, but everything is going to be OK. And uh, the room, my office was full of people. There was only one person who saw Boar. And she stayed with me the whole time. The rest of the room didn't even see what was going on. And then I start crying. I said, that's it. I'm, I'm. A few hours later, or was it almost at the end of the day, uh, I received the news. I didn't, I didn't leave. I stayed there. I stayed in the corner praying. Just saying, Lord, nothing is going to happen to me without you and I handle it together again. And uh, I was told that it was, it was a mistake with <laughs> apologies and everything. And uh, on top of all that, they gave me an award. <laughs> because I didn't know people 
were watching me. They were watching me. And I said, I, I, I don't know this, but they told me after that I was telling people when they were coming to, to talk to me, I was saying, no, everything is going to be OK. Whatever happens, everything is going to be OK. So I received a, a, an award for handling <laughs> stuff the way I did. And I wrote to Pastor Angio saying that um, the award is for God because he was the one with me Amen. so God is faithful Amen. Amen. Let, me, let, me, let me give this a little more perspective now stay right there if you ever seen those movies where people's identity gets wiped out where they go use their credit cards and it's all cancelled where everybody they knew now looks at them funny their neighbors this is what she went through because they're firing people all the time mm -hmm. and they do it this way they, you disappear from the system then everyone gets a memo then you tell to bag your stuff and and they walk you out of the building this is all that she was seeing she's sitting there going oh they're gonna come through the door at any moment mm -hmm. and yes. walk me out to my car and then ransack my car to make sure I don't take company stuff with me this is all going through her head. So, you know, it's, it seems, doesn't see, she doesn't tell it like that. I'm going to be more dramatic because that's how it was. She called me up. She couldn't even talk. She couldn't even get it out. She goes, I don't exist. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's trying to explain to me what she's going through. She can't even say it. I'm not in the computer. Nothing's working. What do you think? I'm like, I don't know what to think. But uh, they gave her an award for not losing her mind. Yeah. Because this is a, 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 a st mind you, Honeywell's a huge company. They know what they're doing for the most part. <laughs> for the most part, they know what they're doing, right? So when something like this goes on, you think that they know what they're doing. Yeah. Right? And when you get that, then they, somebody comes in later on and saves the day. No, 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 no. She was traumatized for days. <laughs> It took her days to get over this. This yes. was not an overnight, yeah. oh, okay, everything. No, no, it wasn't like that. She was, she was shut down for days up here mm. because that was emotional. That was, yeah. that was hard, man. Yeah. You, you're dealing, she deals with people all over the world. Her phone calls are all over the world. People have to get up sure. all day long. That's all she does. I used to visit her during the day, but she, she's too busy handling calls from all over the world. She's talking to people all over the, literally all over the world, Europe, India. Asia, you Asia. name it. She, and they're all talking and she's got something to say. She's not just a pawn. She's a, a, a decision maker, an analyst, you know, an analyzer of things. She's looking at everybody's stuff. She's like a cop, but she does. She's in the rear keeping an eye on all the big stuff. When somebody goofs around with a requisition, it's like a, a million dollar thing, $800,000 yeah. thing. She handles big, big stuff. So someone like that is going to be under the radar yeah. when the computer says you don't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? person that doesn't exist anymore and was handling multi-million dollar things is someone we want to keep an eye on yeah. for yeah. a minute anyway. And you are forgetting uh, one thing, but thank God I remember now. When I called David, I said, David, I feel like, uh, do you remember Passover? Okay, that's, I, I felt that really, really, because imagine that, I, I cannot even say it, but I, I remember when I called David, 